after hackers are getting smarter, faster, and bolder, and the credit card breach at stores like Target and Neiman Marcus shows just how far they'll go. Certainly so. Now, tonight, our week long series, Stealing You, continues. Seven Action News investigator Ross Jones gets inside the black market where your personal information is sold, it seems, to the highest bidder. Ross? Well, Jeff Joanne, the FBI says it is getting harder and harder to chase down these hackers, says they feel like they can't win sometimes. And while it's getting harder and harder to find those hackers, it is easy to find their victims. Connie Jeff Fire has plenty to worry about these days. In a few weeks, she'll be undergoing her second brain surgery, trying to treat a disease that makes it hard to get out of bed in the morning. She doesn't need any more bad news in her life, but on a day last month, well, she got some. My card was declined. I called my husband and I was screaming at him, call the bank. Find out why this card's not working. Like more than 40 million others, the Utica resident was a victim of the Target data breach. A hacker stole her debit card information and sold it online. It happened here in an internet forum, a sort of black market eBay that anyone can access. We found plenty with just a few search terms in Google. It is definitely a marketplace. People are there to advertise. MSU associate professor Thomas Holt has studied the underground industry closely. Guiding us to some forums where a Visa Gold card will run you 150 bucks, but a classic, well, that'll go for 130. If that price is too rich, you can always buy in bulk. The more you buy, the more you save, and this is true across all the sites. So it's like buy, buying a Costco, really? Exactly. For credit cards? Yeah, absolutely. A newer card or higher credit limit can usually mean a higher price, says a former hacker who spoke with us. Well, there's some value into knowing this guy was able to buy two grand yesterday. And this hacker forum peddles credit cards that were freshly skimmed, meaning they were just acquired from a credit card swipe machine like this. They were tested before sale, so you know you're getting something that works. And it comes with everything, right down to the user's mother's maiden name. The better organized ones have sellers that offer these customer service lines. So if you ever have a problem, contact me, we'll figure it out. Even hackers care about customer service. Yes. Most websites and hackers themselves, says the FBI's Tom Winterhalter, are found in Eastern Europe, where they're more difficult to prosecute. They adjust their tactics when they realize that we have a good foothold inside of there to, to try to prevent that. They move to the countries that we may not have such a good foothold. And right now, that place is Russia. Since there's no extradition treaty there with the U.S., cyber criminals know it's almost impossible for agencies like the FBI to go after them. They are seldom caught your risk of prosecution is very low. If you're a Michigan resident and you're hacking accounts in Florida, there's a pretty good chance that you're going to get caught and that you will serve some kind of prison sentence. Prosecutions do happen in hacking cases, but they're rare. And as hackers continue to change their tactics, law enforcement officials admit that keeping customers like Connie safe is often a losing battle. I don't have time to worry about that. I, I, I need to know that my bank has got me covered and and the places that I frequent and the places that I shop are going to take care of my, my information. Now, the mastermind of the largest credit card hack in history is actually serving his prison sentence right here in Michigan. Albert Gonzalez hacked 170 million credit card and ATM numbers back in 2005, and today he's serving a 20-year prison sentence in Milan, Michigan.